In our next game, it'll be South Dakota and South Dakota State. USD picking up its 20th win of the season yesterday against nine losses, knocking off top-rated North Dakota. South Dakota State beat Omaha to improve to 22-7. And, and it was a sloppy game, actually. It went to overtime, but it was not the most artistic game you will ever see. We heard Jeff Rao saying in the postgame comments yesterday that South Dakota feels that they can beat anyone. And after beating the number one team in the nation, they'd have to have a lot of confidence coming into this one against the Jackrabbits, who finished second in the NCC. Can't say enough about the turnaround that Jim Thorson has led the Jackrabbits to, bringing his team to second place this year after a 10th place finish last year. Dave Boots on the other side for South Dakota. Also a remarkable coaching job after losing Tim Hatchett. Graves in good hope, bringing his team to the championship game of this tournament for the second straight year. This is Boots' third straight winning season with the Coyotes, and that hasn't happened to the Coyotes since the late 50s. So two tremendous coaching jobs here today. Place is filling up here as we expect a good crowd for this statewide rivalry between the Jackrabbits and the Coyotes. What do you want me to do? You see some of the crowd here. It should be loud and noisy here with the two South Dakota schools meeting up. I'm just sitting here alone, and I'm trying to think. I'm, okay, I'm just trying to find Jeff, and I don't see him. We'll be back with more pregame coverage in a moment. This is the NCC4 Tournament live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Steaks, we got them. For the Sioux Falls area's best steaks, Mr. Jig Steaks and Spirits, 2808 South Minnesota, Sioux Falls. It's been a hard day's night. Everybody get to work. I've been like a dog. It's been a hard day's night. How was your day? I should be sleeping like a log. But when I get home to you, I'll find the things that you do will make me feel. After your hard day, spend the night with us. Cheers, followed by Who's the Boss? Monday on KSFY. At the Sioux Falls Arena, South Dakota and South Dakota State preparing to tip it off for the NCC Championship. Let's go to Jeff Harkness with Dave Boots. Thank you, Pat. Dave Boots and the Coyotes going for a second straight tournament title. When you talk about South Dakota State, you talk about defense, especially full court defense. Yes, they're very quick. They got two quick guards in White and Matthews that come at you with 94 feet with a lot of pressure, and you have to really handle the ball well. Kids are going to have to make some really good decisions, and that's going to be a real key to this game for us. You guys have been a hot three-point wise. Is that going to be your strategy again coming in today? Well, we'll take whatever their defense is going to give us. If we can get the ball inside, we'd like to do that. And if we get some perimeter shots, we're going to have to be able to knock them down. We didn't get many shots yesterday from that range. And South Dakota State's defense is very good on the perimeter, so I'm sure they're going to take some of those shots away from us. So I think we're going to need to get some good games out of Jeff Rowe and Doug Moeller inside today. Okay, Dave, thanks very much. Good luck to the Coyotes today. They will be looking to defend their tournament championship against their arch rivals, South Dakota State. Pat? Thank you, Jeff. And you can hear the crowd, some cheering, some booing, as the South Dakota Coyotes leave the floor. Hope to hear from... South Dakota State coach Jim Thorson very soon. South Dakota and South Dakota State. That's all you need to say to get excited for this one. In this series, each team won at home this year. South Dakota winning 75-67 on February 2nd. South Dakota State winning 76-69 on March the 2nd. 
In the overall series, South Dakota State leads the Coyotes with 102 wins, 72 losses, and there was even a tie. And listen to that ovation for South Dakota State as the Jackrabbits retire to their locker room. As we're about eight minutes away from the opening tip. You'll see all the action right here, so stick with us for an exciting day of NCC basketball all across the states of North and South Dakota. And listening to Dave Boots there, uh, South Dakota has been known to have those three-point long bombers. Actually, they didn't have to rely on it that much yesterday against the Sioux as Jeff Rao was carrying the load inside, playing a, one of the most outs one of his better career games against Dave Vonish. And that will be a key again today, I'm sure, if Rao can stay hot. South Dakota State, on the other hand, well, their strength also uh, in the backcourt with Chris White and Tony Matthews. White with 23 yesterday in the win over Omaha, and Matthews adding 16. One thing to keep in mind about Rao is South Dakota State, as we mentioned yesterday, really doesn't have a true center. They've got Pete Leiferman, who plays in the middle, but, uh, and, and Rao really had a ball game yesterday against Dave Vonish, who is a true center. And so it'll be interesting to see if uh, Jeff Rao can continue his hot play or if Ryan Williams can start heating up the shooting and, and uh, South Dakota can get a much more balanced attack than we saw yesterday. They are not accustomed to getting the majority of their points from one big man. They have been uh, getting some big performances from guys like Rosenquist and, and Moeller and uh, Williams, but uh, Rao has not been carrying them the load offensively for much of the time this year. Jeff, you've seen these teams a lot more than I have. Now you tell me, who's got the edge today as far as the fan support? Well, traditionally, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, traditionally the fans from Brookings tend to follow their team away from home a little bit better than the fans from Vermillion, but in looking at the building now, I'd say that we're about pretty even and also there's a lot of people here from the Sioux Falls area who maybe know people or maybe are an alum of, of one of the schools and, and some families where you have an alum from each school and so there's a lot of uh, casual interest in this game because Sioux Falls really geographically is smack dab right in the middle between Vermilion to the south on I-29 and Brookings to the north on I-29. They're each about 50 miles or so away. And we were just saying that uh you know, Jeff Rao told you yesterday that after the win over North Dakota, they feel they can play with anybody. So the Coyotes, I'm sure, are going to go all out today. I mean, what the heck? They've knocked off one giant. Let's go for two. Well, they know they can beat South Dakota State, unlike when they played North Dakota yesterday because they were 0-2 against the Sioux during the year. But they know they can beat South Dakota State because they beat them down in their building in Vermillion. This is a neutral floor. Uh, neither team has lost a game on this floor yet this season. And here come the Jackrabbits. We're going to try to get a word with head coach Jim Thorson. Listen to this ovation for South Dakota State. As it looks like we won't get a sellout crowd, but we will get a good crowd. South Dakota State and South Dakota. Jackrabbits like to use full court man defensive pressure and run and jump defense off that pressure. And they cause problems for teams to handle the ball. They really pressure the ball in the passing lanes. Whereas the South Dakota Coyotes coming onto the floor right now. They can run their offense very well. Good passing team. Usually a man to man defensive club. Should be an interesting matchup. It always is when the Jackrabbits and the Coyotes meet up. Let's go to Jeff Harkness with Jim Thorson. Thank you, Pat. One year ago, South Dakota State finished 10th out of 10 North Central Conference teams. And today, Jim Thorson, you play for the conference tournament title. What a difference a year makes. Yeah, I guess uh, we like that song <laughs> right now anyway. Uh, we have uh, turned things around a little bit. Credit to players. Uh, 
to come back and uh, got a new direction and uh, a good positive attitude about what they can accomplish. Uh, young kids and new kids that really fit into the program and our system we're trying to establish and everything's really turned out well for us. And obviously no surprises whenever South Dakota State goes against South Dakota in any sport and especially this season basketball where you split. You guys won up there and you lost down in Vermilion. Right. And, uh, I, I'm just trying to think. It's been a long time, really, since I think both schools have been up at the same time and going after it, each other I, I, under this situation. Uh, they, you know, there's been times in history where they're both battling for it, and it's great to see that for South Dakota basketball. You guys had a key win on this floor against Augustana a few weeks back, a big overtime win. Uh, South Dakota hasn't played, hadn't played here before yesterday's game, and since early in the year during the holiday tournament, is this building any sort of an advantage for either club? Well, we're trying to make it a psychological advantage. But uh, it's been good to us now. We've won like four games on this floor, a couple overtime games. And uh, with our home big crowd here, too, it really helps to make it more of a home atmosphere. What are the key matchups as you see it for today's game? Well, I just go right down the list there. Uh, USD poses problems at every position. Ryan Williams, of course, out there with his clutch shooting and uh, great range. Uh, those kinds of things, and uh, just a good solid ball club. And then Rao had an outstanding game yesterday that we're going to have to really watch him close. Both clubs, both your club and the Coyotes, seem to struggle a bit offensively, especially in the early stages of the first half yesterday. Are you concerned about getting out of the gate in a hurry? Uh, always concerned about that, yes. Uh, the last two, three games, we've got out to such great starts. Uh, I uh, kind of get to expect that. And uh, then we were, we were pretty tight yesterday and uh, got off to a little slower start. but. Uh, we rely on our defense to, to get us going, and, and that'll be a real key for us to watch for. Okay, Jim, win or lose, congratulations on a great season for the Jackrabbits. Good luck to them this afternoon's game. Pat, the Jackrabbits are ready. They'll go against their arch rivals, the Coyotes, for the NCC Tournament Championship. And for a berth in the NCAA Tournament, we'll have the action coming up next. This is the NCC4 Tournament live from the Sioux Falls Arena. The Roland Pin Restaurant has fantastic family dining for you and the entire family. Start the day off right with two eggs and toast or a fresh baked muffin for just 99 cents or build your own sandwich. It's our spring special, salad or deli bar, $3.99. And don't forget our nightly all-you-can-eat buffet specials. You make the choice. Bring in your family and friends to the Roland Pin Restaurant in Sioux Falls, located on West Russell, just west of the arena. Remember the Roland Pin Restaurant. When it comes to buying a color TV, many people think state-of-the-art begins overseas. When the truth is, state-of-the-art starts here. You just have to know what to ask for. Ask for the only TVs with four ways to enjoy stereo sound, like Bose and Dolby Surround. Ask to see a Zenith. For true innovation in television, quality never looked more like a Zenith. For your free remote, see Graham Tire Company in Sioux Falls, Beeline Electric in Mitchell, or Peterson TV and Appliance in Kent. Well, they're serving hair on a stick here at Sioux Falls Arena. And uh, that's H A R E. A battle of the mascots there, and all kinds oh, of hijinks my. between these two clubs. It's always interesting when they get together, all sorts of interesting anecdotes. And we've had a few uh, animals that have been let loose at some of these games, uh, some of them living, some of them uh, not uh, long departed. All sorts of folk folklore involving these games, as I'm sure, when the bison go against the Sioux up in North Dakota. I was just about to say, I've seen a few Sioux bison games, but never a Jack's Coyotes game. I'm uh, looking forward to it. They are fun. And uh, to meet the particulars in this ball game this afternoon, we're going to turn it over to our public address announcer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sioux Falls Arena and to the NCC4 championship game between the South Dakota State University Jackrabbits and the University of South Dakota Coyotes. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you all to stand as a mixed quartet from Sioux Falls Lincoln Senior High School, Chris Gantford, Amy Meyer, Scott Jacobson, and Eric Barlow sing for us our national anthem. So gallantly streaming 
And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled From Lincoln Senior High School, Chris Gantfort, Amy Meyer, Scott Jacobson, and Eric Barlow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups. Starting at one guard for South Dakota State University, number 12, a six foot one junior from Hammond, Indiana, Chris White. At a guard for the University of South Dakota, number 12, a 5'11 sophomore from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, John Brennigan. At the other guard for the Jackrabbits, number 20, a 5'9 senior from Ilgen, Illinois, Tony Matthews. And for the Coyotes, number 20, a six foot one junior from Gillette, Wyoming, Ryan Williams. The forwards. For South Dakota State, number 32, a six foot three junior from Brookings, South Dakota, Jeff Boer. For the Coyotes, number 22, a six foot five freshman from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Troy Karanev. For State, number 42, a six foot seven junior from Jervis, Oregon, Chris Count. And for the U, number 32, a six foot six senior from West Point, Iowa, Doug Muller. The centers for South Dakota State, number 54, six foot seven sophomore from Aurora, South Dakota, Pete Leiferman. And for USD, number 50, a six foot nine senior from Harlan, Iowa, Jeff Rao. The head coach of the Jackrabbits, Jim Thorson. His assistants, Scott Nagy, Trace Bevel, and Tim Nelson. The head coach of the Coyotes, is Dave Boots, his assistants, John Lembezeter, Bob Slava, Greg Lansing, and Toby Mosier. The referee for this championship game, Mr. Jay Salmon of St. Paul, Minnesota. The umpires, Mr. Paul Jansen of Orange City, Iowa, and Mr. Mike Spanier of Sartell, Minnesota. Well, as if they need any more incentive when the state and the U go at it. This one for the conference tournament championship and an automatic qualifying berth into the NCAA Division II tournament. South Dakota State will be wearing their road blue uniforms with gold numbers. USD in their home gray with red numbers. Jeff Rao jumps it against Chris Counts and the ball controlled by Pete Leiferman. South Dakota State going to the basket on the right of your screen for the first half. USD will go right to left. Tony Matthews with it. Chris White guarded by Troy Taranis. This is Jeff Boer down in the corner. Up top, Leiferman dumps it inside. Counts. Contact with Moeller on the way up. And first miss of the ball game for either side. John Brennigan, the assist man for USD, gives up to Ryan Williams, the hot three-point shooter. Doug Moeller. Back to Brennigan now. There's Williams. Thought about a three. Moeller will also shoot a three. As he, Taranez, 
Williams and Randy Rosenquist off the bench, all capable of hitting the threes. Leiferman on the inside, working on Moeller, over Moeller. Rebounded by Counts. Matthews is put on the line for two. So Tony Matthews with the first bucket of the ball game for either side, 2-0 South Dakota State. Ryan Williams back out to Brennigan. Inside Rao, knocked away by Leiferman, controlled by Matthews. Boer on the way to Leiferman, back to Matthews. USD in their matchup zone. Chris White, first time he shot the ball for a three. Had two chances to go in, rebounded by Counts. Counts around Jeff Rao, four nothing South Dakota State. And credit Leiferman with the tip to give him the opportunity. Glad you're with us for what should be a great ball game. Doug Moeller trying to look inside of Tyrannis, who's posting up against White. Tyrannis will try a three. Rebound by Rao. His shot knocked away. Leiferman got a hand on it. Counts controlled it to Matthews. They're letting him play. White on the inside, giving up some height against Tyrannis, but leans in. Shot missed. Rao batted it. Tyrannis controlled it. Here's Brennigan down the lane. It counts. He was fouled by counts. That looked awfully inviting. Look at all the room he has to maneuver. And Brennigan finally gets South Dakota on the board and a chance to pull the Coyotes within one. Brennigan on the year, an 86% free throw shooter. He's a sophomore from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. This fires and it's still 4-2, South Dakota State, and they have the basketball. Just the start of things here, the NCC Tournament Championship. Leiferman on the inside from Matthews. Tremendous save, Leiferman helping out on two baskets now. 6-2 State. Brennigan gives it up to Williams, who has yet to shoot. Lob it on the inside to Rao, who bounced it on the end, and he walked. He was caught between Counts and Leiferman, making life miserable for him, and it goes as a turnover for the Coyotes. And another chance for the Jacks to expand their four-point lead. Rao had a career in yesterday's win over UND. 16 points in the first half alone. Here's State now trying to build on a four-point lead. Jeff Boer about 18 feet away, guarded by Brennigan. 20 left on the clock. And here's Matthews over Williams. A little out of control, and White grabs it with 15 left on the shot clock. Matthews over Williams for three. Rebound by Brennigan. Needs some help here. Doesn't like the numbers, so sets up the offense. Tarranes with White on him. Moeller working against Counts. Moeller along the baseline, shot blocked by Leiferman. But Tehran is there to pick up the guard. Tehran is 6-5, operating against White, 6-1. We'll watch that matchup for you as Leiferman throws it at the other end for South Dakota State. Back and forth we go. State still up by four at 8-4. We've played four and a half minutes. Running into Williams, his first three. Rebounded by White. Boer will try the lane, knocked away by Brennigan. Here comes Tarana's on the breakout. Three on two. Foul by Matthews. Second team foul on South Dakota State. First foul on Matthews. 
And we've got time out on the floor. 15.06 to play, first half. South Dakota State leads the University of South Dakota for the NCC Tournament Championship. You're watching the NCC4 live from Sioux Falls Arena. Disabled mobility doesn't have to be difficult. r and conversions can adapt your vehicle, installing convenience and independence. Dependable wheelchair lifts, hand driving aids, and other custom adaptions can make life much easier. r and also has a full line of accessories and can customize your van to your specifications. Freedom, mobility, and convenience. That's what r and conversions is all about. r and 13th and Marion Road, Sioux Falls. Stop or call today at 605-335-8646. Take a look at your bookkeeping system. Does it look like mine used to? At Microcomputer Systems, we can't forget how difficult bookkeeping can be. We recommend and sell only the finest computer systems and software, custom designed to meet your business needs, including accounting, herd management, hedging, futures contracts, and profit and loss statements. If you want to solve your business problems, call Microcomputer Systems in Brookings, 1-800-658-3989. We expected a good crowd at Sioux Falls Arena for this NCC Tournament Championship, given the draw. And we have a good crowd. They're making a lot of noise. It's not a full house, but it's uh, darn close to it. Not bad for a Saturday afternoon. Exactly. The last week in a spring break for the students from both schools. In case you just joined us, North Dakota for the second straight year won the third place championship. We've got a discussion here, something on the floor. Some uh, confetti from the pom-poms oh, left cheerleaders. over. The cheerleaders did not clean up their mess. Shame on you. The fans were yelling at the referees. The, none of the players noticed it, and finally the referee blew the whistle. So here we go again. USD with the basketball. They trail it by four. Doug Muller looking at uh, Jeff Rao on the inside. John Brennigan controls it. Two Tiranas around the screen by Moeller. Moeller operating on counts. Brennigan with 18 on the clock inside. There's Rao, and he walks. Jeff Rao still looking to get something going on the inside. Tried a little bit too hard that time and picked up the walk. Tried to muscle in and maybe just a little bit too aggressive on that play. So here's Matthews now with the basketball in South Dakota, a four-point lead. South Dakota State, I should say. But they will give it right back as Chris Counts picks up a quick foul trying to set a screen. That's his second. Substitution time for the Jackrabbits. Brad Timmerman, a 6'6 sophomore from Dickeyville, Wisconsin. He'll take the place of Pete Leiferman. Here come the Yotes now. Down by four at 8-4. We played nearly six minutes. A very low scoring game here in the early stages. Spread man-to-man -man defense. As Rao plays catch with Brennigan. Rao now on the inside, shot blocked by Matthews. The 5-9 Matthews went up to block the shot of the 6-9 Rao. And the Yotes turn it over. Here's White. He's been quiet. Not anymore. He's on the board. First bucket of the game for Chris White. He averages 20. He's out of Hammond, Indiana. Wait. Go ahead, Pat. We, we played six and a half minutes, and the guy we haven't seen much of is Ryan Williams for South Dakota. I think he's only put up the one shot. They've got Boer doing a great defensive job on him in this man-to-man. -man. Biggest lead of the afternoon, 10-4. State has led it from the get-go. Williams tossed up a miss there. Here comes Jeff Boer in South Dakota State. Nice pass on the inside. USD bench wanted a walk from Timmerman, but instead Timmerman puts it in. Now an eight-point game all of a sudden for the Jackrabbits. We heard Jim Thorson's comments about getting out of the gate slow. Dave Boots obviously has some thoughts about it as well. There's Williams for a three. 
and that's the man they need. Their leading scorer averaging 18 a game. That's the offense the red clad Coyote fans are accustomed to seeing. That cuts it back to a five point game. Boer. Rebounded by Williams. So now the Coyotes with a chance to string together back to back buckets. And here's Williams again, towing that three point line from the CBA and the NBA to Toronto's. Back to Williams. Renegan for a rare three. We say rare, he only had eight three pointers during the year. But all of a sudden, it's 12 10. Here's White, his first three point make. He's got five. 3 3 3. And a foul on the backboard on Matthews, who went after Brennigan. Second personal on Matthews. Timeout on the floor. South Dakota State leads the University of South Dakota 15 10 for the NCC Tournament Championship. You're watching the NCC Four live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Is your over the road connection to sporting excitement in 1991. The Twins home opener April 12th, only $50 per person. Jack Rabbit's best of baseball excursions include trips to Wrigley, the new Comiskey Park, and more. Call Jack Rabbit today for details on round one and two of the NCAA tournament in Minneapolis, March 14th and 16th. Only 30 tickets are available, so call Jack Rabbit today. The Twins home opener, the best of baseball, or the NCAA regional. Let Jack Rabbit take you to the sporting excitement. Interlake Sports Center is your full-line Yamaha motorcycle and ATV dealer. If you like to ride, why limit yourself to just two wheels? You can hit the trails with Yamaha's complete line of ATVs, from the Breeze to the high-performance Banshee. If the street's where it's at, then the FZR 600R is for you, the winner at Daytona and other national tracks. Interlake Sport also offers a wide range of Yamaha motorcycles to fit your needs. If you buy a 91 Yamaha street legal motorcycle, Yamaha will give you the insurance built in. Interlake Sports Center in Madison, your one-stop headquarters, where our business is fun. With the Coyotes 1, 75 67 in the Dakota Dome and Vermillion on February 2nd. They were led by Ryan Williams with 24. As Chris White led South Dakota State with 21 in a losing cause. Then when the scene shifted to Brookings at Frost Arena on March 1st, exactly a month later, it was South Dakota State winning 76 69. They got 25 from Tony Matthews that night. 17 from Leiferman and 14 from White. Ryan Williams again leading USD with 18 in a losing cause that night. They split two, and here's Moeller for three. So three-point shooting now from Williams, Brennigan, and Moeller has brought the Coyotes back to within a bucket. They weren't down by as many as eight. They have yet to lead in this game. That's Vanda Wettering who just checked in there. For a minute, I thought I was going to have to write a two down on the score sheet, the way this one was going. Corey Van de Wettering checking in. Tossed up the miss. Randy Rosenquist also in there now for the Coyotes. He wears number 24. And Jeff Rao walks. Now with his second travel early in the going here. And South Dakota needs to settle things down here a little bit. They got Ryan Williams involved in the offense a few minutes earlier, but Rao with another turnover, giving South Dakota State a chance to add to that two-point lead. Anthony Tucker now in there for the ball game, but running the South Dakota State offense. Troy Bauman in there as well. Here's White leaning in. Forced it against Toronto's. It didn't go. Rebounded by the University of South Dakota. Ryan Williams working against Tucker. Now, nice dish on the inside. That was Moeller going up strong. And Moeller will go to the line. He was fouled by Leiferman. Tremendous inside move here by Doug Moeller. Darn near got the hoop, too. Going up around the big 6'7 sophomore from Aurora, South Dakota. But He'll get a chance to make it up at the line. Bowler on the year, 57% free throw shooter. Out of West Point, Iowa. Yeah. 
Hits them both. And we are tied at 15. As USD now is on an 11-3 run. And we've played exactly half of the first 20 minutes. Chris White with it. To Anthony Tucker, guarded by Rosenquist. Tucker with his first shot. He was left alone and he knocked it down. On the year, he just averages four points a game. A rare shot for Anthony Tucker. Rosenquist guarded by Bauman to Moeller, who's on, just got Timmerman on him inside. That's Taranez. Posts up and gets the bucket. We've been tied at 15. Now we're tied at 17. Bauman, brother of Jackrabbit quarterback Shane Bauman. Out of Russell Tyler Ruthen High School in Southwest Minnesota. Chris White spinning on the inside, fouled as it went to the hole. And he will go to the line. Much to the disgust of the Coyotes, who thought he had pushed off. And it'll be 32, Doug Muller with the call. You saw Tirana's backing up there. I think he was trying to get a charge. They're letting some contact go in there. They're letting him play. Moeller pleading that White had pushed off with his left hand while he was shooting with his right hand. There was definite contact uh, on the drive even before the foul was called. White uses all the rim on that one to break the tie now. 18-17 State leads it. Second free throw for the North Central Commons, his fourth leading scorer, their fifth leading steel man. An officials and a on. foul on Leiferman, pushing off on a made free throw. And a foul on one end, and then the other official was blowing the whistle to fix a banner here on the scoring table, so. All kinds of things going on. <laughs> All right, five fouls on State, one on South Dakota. Leiferman's first. With the elbow. <laughs> Got that NCC banner hanging over the uh, high school banner, and now they're patching that up, forcing a brief delay. I can't remember a time I saw a foul on a made free throw. I, I was just going to say, I was looking one way at the other official fixing the banner, and then you said there was a foul. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, the free throw does count, which puts the Jackrabbits up by a bucket at 19-17 and give life from it a foul. Anyway, here comes Taranez working with a bit of a height advantage on Chris White. White, though, makes up for that in quickness. Here's Rosenquist for three. Doesn't draw iron. Rebounded by Moeller. Nice hustle by Moeller. Gets it back. That was uh, Taranez. And Taranez right now ice cold from the three. A lot of three-pointers, but no points yet as Jim Thorson talks it over with referee Jay Salmon trying to Put a bug in his ear to watch the traffic underneath. So Rosenquist and Taranez each with misfiring on a three of this possession. Here's Taranez again around White. Ducks in and he says he'll kick it back out to Moeller. Rosenquist with 30 on the shot clock. Williams around the screen by Rosenquist. Gets it back to him inside Rao. Contact, no whistle. He went up on Van der Wettering. Fans wanted a call there on Van der Wettering. And Dave Boots thought that Van der Wettering dragged his pivot foot but didn't get a whistle. Anthony Tucker operating on Williams. Bauman for three. Rebounded by Rao. That's a rare shot for Bauman. He averages just a bucket a game. I was going to say, for this early stage of the game, they're not even thinking about it. They're not afraid to put up the threes early in the game. Tehran is for two, and he banks it home. And that's six for Tiranas. Tiranas in his first collegiate season, averaging 10 a game out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. A lot of young faces out here on the floor. A lot of players you'll be hearing a lot about over the next two to three years in the North Central Conference. Anthony Tucker fouled by Rosenquist on the way to the hoop. And Brennigan will check back in for the Coyotes. The foul is on number 24. 
7-16 to play, first half. USD 19, SDSU 19. We're coming back for more in a moment. You're watching the NCC4 live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Toshiba America Information Systems located its factory in Mitchell four years ago. Toshiba made its move because they believe in all that the Heartland has to offer. Its hardworking people, its strong sense of community, the family, and the educational system. Because South Dakota bears these qualities and attributes, Toshiba America Information Systems supports both the academic and athletic student. They wish the best of luck to the South Dakota teams that have made it to the NCC4 tournament and are proud to be part of it. Will Rod Motors presents the Smash Group, new kids with used cars on the block. The price of used cars way below the book. You better come right down and take a look. We got cars and trucks and minivans too. A great selection, one just right for you. So come on down and just drive a car. Your books, hot wheels, race you. A star. New kids with used cars on the block, only at Will Rod Motors, your used car headquarters in Chamberlain. Well, we expected end-to-end -end action with shots going up from all over the place and bodies banging on the inside and a tight score, and we've got all that and then some. Now, this little kid couldn't care less. <laughs> You're missing a good one. How can you fall asleep during this game? Although you mentioned the word forced, and I think uh, maybe each team is kind of forcing the three-pointers a little bit here, but uh, as the ball goes back, they haven't, they haven't hit on too many threes after a hot start, so uh, maybe things will settle down here. We've got a great tight flow, though. No lack of intensity from the early stages here. 7-10 to play, first half. Deadlocked at 19. Tucker knocked away by Williams. And USD thought it had gone out off of Tucker, but the ball will stay with the Jackrabbits. Inside, seven minutes to play, first half. Timmerman with it on the outside. Gives it up. This is Ryan Notches, the freshman who's checked in there now. Bauman. Back to Notches. 12 on the shot clock for the Jackrabbits. Inside of 10 now. Here's Tucker, 14-footer. Rebounded by Moeller. The Coyotes with a chance to take their first lead. They trail it by as many as eight at 12-4. Brennigan guarded by Tucker. Here's Williams with Bauman on him. Rosenquist, ball hawk by Natchez. Rosenquist a charge. Anthony Tucker establishing position inside and there you see the shoulder going into the chest and the charge is called. Couple of Iowa guys going at it. Rosenquist and Notches and I think Rosenquist lost a bit of his composure there as Notches was had a hand in his face and when he got around Notches he just blew by uh, Ryan but blew right over Tucker. And a foul on Rosenquist. He picks up two quick ones. So with three fouls now on Rosenquist. Troy Taranis returns for South Dakota. A few viewers in South Dakota who saw the final regular season game of the year when the Cowboys played at Augustana, you know Rosenquist fouls in a hurry. He's a very emotional, intense player out of Heelan High School in Sioux City, Iowa. He sits down now. And now it's State's turn to try to break the deadlock. The third tie of the ball game. Notches for two. Oh, USD hangs onto it. With 5.34 left. And back comes Chris White. Bauman sits down. South Dakota State continuing to pretty much neutralize Ryan Williams, not letting him get a chance to get a, into the flow here. Williams held a three thus far. And a low-scoring defensive first half. We shouldn't be surprised after yesterday. Muller way out away from the basket. 
Williams to Taranis with notches on him now. Brannigan guarded by Tucker. Still with it, gives it to Williams, working off the screen by Rao. Back to Brannigan. Rebounded by Taranis. Oh, what an effort. Falling away with the left hand, he gets the job done. Timmerman back the other way, not just in the corner. Tucker says run play number two. There's White down the lane, dumps it off nicely to Timmerman. Now things get a little prettier. And again, we're tied this time at 21. Williams missed fire on a three. One shot and out for the Coyotes. Williams foul. That is the first foul on Ryan Williams, who was going for the steal there, didn't quite get it, but uh, he's the guy who takes the risk for this South Dakota ball club, and a lot revolves around him. Excellent job coming in from Gillette Junior College in Wyoming. Just his first season playing at the Division II level. Tucker tossed up a miss from three, and here come the Coyotes. Ball game tied at 21, four minutes to play. First half of our NCC tournament title game. Brennigan threw it away. Tucker stole it. Tucker with Brennigan to beat. I don't know if Brennigan slipped or if he was just trying to duck out of the way, but he gave him a lot of room to go over him. State back on top. They have yet to trail. Foul on the inside, and there's a quick second foul on Ryan Williams, working against Chris White. They call it a block. As Dave Boots talks it over with John Brunigan. We've got time out on the floor with 3.33 to play first half. South Dakota State leads the University of South Dakota 23-21. You're watching the NCC4 Tournament Championship live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Yonder comes some outdoors. So, how far in the river? <laughs> On them tires? Don't worry. <laughs> we won't! <laughs> Sooner or later, you'll own General. For passenger car or light truck tires, see OK Tire in Sioux Falls. OK Tire has a complete selection of General Tires to fit your needs. OK Tire, your neighborhood professionals at the corner of Rice Street and Cliff Avenue, Sioux Falls. Who builds the computer power of more small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and big businesses as well? Computerland, period. Computerland Sioux Falls offers superior service, training, and support on Epson desktop and laptop computers and printers. When you've got an Epson, you've got a lot of company. In Sioux Falls at Independence Plaza. Well, just to show you, they'll let anybody run a camera in this place. And what, and what does a coyote see when he looks through his viewfinder? It's out of focus. Now, what do you expect from the coyote cam? Is that, uh, is that the cheap labor you use around here? <laughs> I want to make one correction. I said the USD had a lead. They were actually up once, and that was a 21-19. They have enjoyed one lead, but they are behind again at 23-21. State with a basketball trying to build on a two-point lead. Notches gives it up to Tucker. Timmerman, top of the key. Here's Notches with a shot. And Notches, Notches, his first two of the game. Okoboji High School in Milford, Iowa. All-state selection in the state of Iowa last season as a prep star. Here's Tarana's as the Coyotes trail up by four. They've been down by as many as eight. Tarana's. Around Notches, gives it up, Brennigan. Two-pointer. Back to a two-point lead for the Jackrabbits. 
There's a guy averaging eight. He's already got seven. So where Williams has been relatively neutralized, Brennigan has picked up. Well, it's funny, Pat, how these tournament games produce some unlikely heroes sometimes. You just never know, do you? Keith Douglas, his name jumps to mind for Nebraska Omaha. Here's White for three. And how about the first half that Jeff Rao had yesterday against Dave Wanish in the Fighting Sioux of the University of North Dakota? A great game, but Rao needs to get involved here. He's been held scoreless. Moeller thought about a three. Brannigan, who just hit on a two a moment ago, gives it up to Tiranas on the inside. Shot partially blocked by Van de Wettering, but the foul will go against Van de Wettering. Van der Wettering's first. You see Tiranas was up against a couple of defenders there. The big 6'9 freshman getting the arm in the way. And now South Dakota with a chance to tie the game with 1.56 to go. Now with a chance just to pull within one. Tiranas coming back off a red shirt year. He's a math major. And he'll celebrate his 20th birthday at the end of this month. And he misfires on two. State dodges that bullet. They have a chance to increase their lead to four with a two-pointer, five with a three. Timmerman on the outside. Tucker down. Brings it back out to the top of the key and he'll reset the offense. Goes to White. Van de Wettering inside. That's Timmerman. Put it up and in over Moeller. Six points off the bench for Brad Timmerman. Again, a four-point game with South Dakota State on top. Here's Williams. Back to Brennigan. To Williams again for three. Can't get it to fall. Rebound Timmerman. Final minute, first half. White into Van de Wettering. Over Moeller. Offensive foul. Charge on Corey Van de Wettering for his second foul, and there you see it. Great position by Doug Moeller that time. And now with 57.9 seconds left, USD will try to cut into a four-point deficit. There's a guy that can do it in a hurry. He can do it at three points at a time, Ryan Williams. Moeller can also hit the three. Jeff Rao probably not. <laughs> Tiranas can also hit the three as well. Renegan, he's mugged by Tucker and no foul. <laughs> They're letting them bump and grind. There's Williams, ducks inside, hangs. Still can't get it, rebounded by Natchez. Final 24 seconds. And State will play for one, and their fans are on their feet. As the Jackrabbits will take a lead into the locker room at halftime. Brennigan just got plowed over by Notches and nothing was called. Wide for three. Seven seconds left. And Vanda Wettering, well, I will call it Notches, will pick up a foul. Reaching foul on Notches as Jim Thorson looks on. Free throw time for John Brennigan. Dave Boots has to be a little frustrated here with Williams not being able to muster more than three, and Toronto's missing a chance to tie earlier at a couple of free throws. Now Brennigan makes his first free throw. One for two now today as Rosenquist returns. He's playing with three fouls, and Williams will relax for a bit. 5.9 seconds on the clock. Brennigan, an All-State player in Wisconsin. Also an academic All-North Central Conference selection. Hits them both, 5.9 seconds left before the break. State with one last chance to build on a two-point lead. Here's Tucker inside, Van de Wettering hits. And we go to the break. Beautiful. In our All-South Dakota matchup for the NCC Tournament Crown, the Jackrabbits of State lead the Coyotes of the U, 29-25 after 20 minutes. We'll come back with halftime in a moment. You're watching the NCC4 live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Selling seed corn is, is truly different than anything I can think of just because 
you see this person three times a year and you want to be able to drive back in his yard next year and not have him mad at you if you can help it, which means don't make any promises you can't keep. It's nice to know that company made promises to the dealers, they're holding their promises to dealers and, and that means our promises are good to the customer. It doesn't make a liar out of me. Lake Area Door and Spa presents Great Lake Spas with 16 spas in stock, 11 different models in numerous colors and tub sizes. The two-person intimate paradise to 10-person entertaining size. Convenient portability allows inside or outside use or even both. Designed with beauty and durability, Great Lake Spas are easy to operate and are affordable to own. Free delivery and setup in the Watertown area. Lake Area Door and Spas and Great Lake Spas in Watertown. A tough team to beat. Steaks, we got them. For the Sioux Falls area's best steaks, Mr. Jig Steaks and Spirits, 2808 South Minnesota, Sioux Falls. Well, now, could you tell me his symptoms? Are you taking any medication? Have you taken your temperature? Uh-huh. Well, can you walk on it? I think you need to see a doctor as soon as possible. Sure, I'll be happy to refer you. Why does Ask a Nurse think it's so important to put registered nurses on the phone? Because it's your health that's on the line. Hello, Ask a Nurse. May I help you? For health information or help finding a doctor, call Ask a Nurse, your source for health care answers. Where's the defense? That's what South Dakota coach Dave Boots wants to know as the first half ends with the Coyotes allowing Anthony Tucker to go all the way down court with a nice dish to Corey Van de Wettering. And you can't find a much prettier than that. Tucker, a good penetrator, and you see why. They gave him plenty of room to operate. And it's 29-25, South Dakota State leading at halftime. Jeff Harkness has a halftime guest. Thank you very much, Pat, and a man with the more than casual interest in the outcome of today's game, the University of South Dakota Athletic Director Jack Doyle with us. And, Jack, you guys must love this event. Second year in a row, you've been in it for the conference uh, tournament title. Well, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Dave Boots and his team. Uh, we lost some great players from last year's team, and I think a lot of people didn't figure at the beginning of the year that we would be here. But uh, through his encouragement, through his great coaching, uh, it's really great to be here. And... Uh, what could you ask? We have a great crowd here this afternoon, and uh, I've been associated at the university for 19 years. I've seen some great state U games, and it looks like that this one will go right down to the wire also. Certainly the setting is great for this game. You mentioned the uh, job that Dave Boots has done. They, you breeze through the non-conference portion of the schedule pretty easily, and then you hit the NCC, and things got a little rough there for a while. Well, I think uh, you've been around a long time. We are probably in the North Central Conference we're probably in the best Division II conference in the United States. And uh, when you're playing a non-conference schedule, and then you go into the conference schedule, and you have the young players that we had at the beginning of the year, it takes them some time for them to adapt to the particular tough defense that they're going to run into, which they didn't run into during the months of November and December. And I think that really makes a difference. And I think now our Tyrannus and Rosenquist, although they're freshmen, uh, they have a full year of eligibility under their belt. And I think you're showing them up this afternoon that they're really playing some good ball. And I think there was a great indication yesterday against North Dakota University. I mean, it was just a different team than it was, let's say, a month ago. You mentioned the strong showing by the NCC. They will, again, this year send two teams to the uh, postseason after this because North Dakota is already in. And then, of course, the winner of this game. How will NCC schools do against the rest of the country? Well, I'm on that selection committee along with Commissioner Olson, and we have a conference call at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And uh, presently, North Dakota University is in. Kearney State is in the running. Metropolitan State from Denver is in there. You have to say South Dakota State's in there, and you have to say the university's in there. And uh, we're certainly hoping that maybe there's a possibility that we could get three teams into it. Uh, naturally, the team that wins here this afternoon will be an automatic qualifier. On North Dakota U, that would be two. And maybe there might be a possibility we could get three in there. 
Can you give us an inside line on where the region might be hosted? A lot of people say Grand Forks because of the way the Sioux has played. A lot of people say maybe whoever wins this game might have had the inside track. Well, uh, because of the drawn power in the North Central Conference, any team that puts a bid in has to guarantee $25,000. And North Dakota University, uh, because of the great fan support that they have up there over the years, they hosted it last year and was very, very successful. And one of the things that the NCAA looks at is money. And, uh, what a surprise. Yes, that's absolutely right. And uh, right now, North Dakota University would be in the running, but uh, it all depends what happens here with the outcome of this game also. Let me get your impressions quickly of the first half. Well, the first half, I thought it was like a boxing match. They were kind of feeling themselves out. And uh, I think that South Dakota State has done a great job on keeping the ball away from Jeff Rao. And I think to here in the second half, I think you'll see our guys start shooting that three-point shot. I think uh, we've played a good first half, and I think the fans have enjoyed it. And I think the second half, uh, you'll probably see a different Coyote team. Okay, Jack Doyle, thanks very much for joining us. Jack Doyle, the athletic director of the University of South Dakota. Pat? Thank you, Jeff. South Dakota State 29, South Dakota 25. We're at halftime. We'll be back with more, but first, you are watching the NCC4 Tournament live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Interlake Sports Center is your full-line Yamaha motorcycle and ATV dealer. If you like to ride, why limit yourself to just two wheels? You can hit the trails with Yamaha's complete line of ATVs, from the Breeze to the high-performance Banshee. If the street's where it's at, then the FZR 600R is for you, the winner at Daytona and other national tracks. Interlake Sport also offers a wide range of Yamaha motorcycles to fit your needs. If you buy a 91 Yamaha street legal motorcycle, Yamaha will give you the insurance built in. Interlake Sports Center in Madison, your one-stop headquarters, where our business is fun. The Roland Pin Restaurant has fantastic family dining for you and the entire family. Start the day off right with two eggs and toast or a fresh baked muffin for just 99 cents or build your own sandwich. It's our spring special, salad or deli bar $3.99. And don't forget our nightly all-you-can-eat buffet specials. You make the choice. Bring in your family and friends to the Roland Pin Restaurant in Sioux Falls, located on West Russell, just west of the arena. Remember the Roland Pin Restaurant. Eyewitness News presents Teammate. His accuracy from the field led the Falcons. Today, he brings you the most accurate weather. She was heard leading cheers for the Huskies. Now she brings you the leading news stories. His versatility made him a standout today. He puts that versatility to work for you as a news reporter and anchor. His play led the team to consecutive championships. Now he shows you an instant replay of area sports. Together, they team up to bring you the news, weather, and sports. Teammates on Eyewitness News. When it comes to buying a color TV, many people think state-of-the-art begins overseas. When the truth is, state-of-the-art starts here. You just have to know what to ask for. Ask for the only TVs with four ways to enjoy stereo sound, like Bose and Dolby Surround. Ask to see a Zenith. For true innovation in television, quality never looked more like a Zenith. Find out about your free remote at Graham Tire Company, Sioux Falls, Boss Supply in Shankton, or Tom's TV and Appliance in Brookings. From the Sioux Falls Arena in Sioux Falls, South Dakota with Jeff Harkness, Pat Sweeney at halftime of the championship game of the NCC Tournament. South Dakota State on top of South Dakota, 29-25. And South Dakota State has really spread out the scoring. Eight Jackrabbits have scored as opposed to just four for South Dakota. Individual leaders, Brennigan with nine for South Dakota, White with seven for South Dakota State. And as we look at the uh, field goal and free throw percentages, rebounds and turnovers, we can see that uh, actually South Dakota State playing a good game as far as the turnovers are concerned. And that's a reason that they're ahead. USD uh, with the advantage on the inside with 18 boards, but they've only made nine field goals. They have yet to really get on track shooting, although field goal percentage is about even stay with the advantage because they've taken five more shots even though they've been outscored at the line by two and uh, USD needs to bring up that field goal percentage a bit if they're going to stay in it. Especially Ryan Williams one of six in the first half one of four from three point range Jeff Rao scoreless in two field goal attempts so and he had 16 in the first half so, yesterday yeah. against Dave Vonish in the in the fighting Sioux so a big turnaround. And that was one of the key matchups that I know Jim Thorson was working on today. We're going to come back with more halftime of our tournament championship game in a moment. 
You're watching the NCC4 live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Fire sweeps through a Sioux Falls parsonage. Good afternoon. Coming up tonight, the smoke could be seen for miles as this garage fire quickly consumed the entire house. Jan Thornburg has a full report. Plus, moving ahead in Harrisburg, residents band together on their first recycling project. And in sports, Neil Beasley will be here with all the scores and highlights from today's big games. I'm Alex Strauss. Join me and Mike Monsoor tonight after the game for Eyewitness News Tonight. Haven't you waited long enough? Microcomputer Systems is ready to help you get out from under your work and get on top of your business. You're ready right now. Don't wait any longer. Call today and find out how you can keep profit records, budgets, and itemized costs at your fingertips. We're ready when you are, wherever you are. <laughs> Microcomputer Systems has the personal service and technical support to keep you where you want to be. He said, Mommy, my tummy hurts, but who do you call at 3 in the morning? Well, as soon as I heard the symptoms, I told her to get him into emergency right away. Don't wait. It was lucky we didn't wait. It was acute appendicitis. He was so brave. Then I guess maybe three weeks later, I got this little surprise in the mail. If we helped one person, it would be worth it. No. Hello, ask a nurse. So far, it's been worth it millions of times. Ask a nurse, your source for health care answers. I'm a patrol here at Franklin School, and my job is to be captain. What I do is um, I take down reports if anybody has them, and I walk around to every corner and make sure that people aren't doing things that like they're not supposed to do and that they're doing the right thing. Come across. I do care if the kids get hurt because I feel that it's my job to watch out for them. You have to be very responsible. It's the 176th time they've rolled it out there for South Dakota State and the University of South Dakota to go at it. And at halftime of this one, which is uh, probably one of the biggest games they've ever played against each other, South Dakota State leads at 29-25 for the tournament championship in the NCC4 and the automatic qualifying berth for the NCAA Division II tournament. Region uh, location will be announced tomorrow. We know the University of North Dakota is in. We know the winner of this game is in, and based on what Jack Doyle told us, and he's a man in the know, there could be a third team as well, possibly South Dakota State if they should happen to lose. Well, it happened in the women's regional where three NCC teams got in, and it could happen with the men. Well, we will find out, and we'll talk more about the second half when we come back for the uh, opening of the second of 20 minutes. You're watching the NCC4 live from Sioux Falls Arena. The Roland Pin Restaurant has fantastic family dining for you and the entire family. Start the day off right with two eggs and toast or a fresh baked muffin for just 99 cents. Or build your own sandwich. It's our spring special, salad or deli bar, $3.99. And don't forget, our nightly all-you-can-eat buffet specials. You make the choice. Bring in your family and friends to the Roland Pin Restaurant in Sioux Falls, located on West Russell, just west of the arena. Remember the Roland Pin Restaurant. Who builds the computer power of more small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and big businesses as well? Computerland, period. Computerland Sioux Falls offers superior service, training, and support on Epson desktop and laptop computers and printers. When you've got an Epson, you've got a lot of company. In Sioux Falls at Independence Plaza. We want to leave the land like we found it. It's good, if not better. So we're worried about the environment, too. You know, we want to keep the water good and uh, soil in nice shape. We want to try to cut down on erosion and things like that. I've always heard this expression, you own land. Well, the good Lord has just made us a caretaker of that land while we're here. That's all it is. You don't really own it. When it comes to buying a color TV, many people think state-of-the-art begins overseas. When the truth is, state-of-the-art starts here. You just have to know what to ask for. Ask for the only TVs with four ways to enjoy stereo sound, like Bose and Dolby Surround. Ask to see a Zenith. For true innovation in television, quality never looked more like a Zenith. 
Find out about your free remote at Graham Tire Company, Sioux Falls, Boss Appliance, Yankton, or Shoals Electric, Parkston. They've come from all over southeastern South Dakota and from other points to watch this one. And they've seen a good first half of basketball with 20 minutes to play in South Dakota State, leading the University of South Dakota by four for the NCC Tournament Championship. And I think we've seen in the first half that South Dakota State does have a little bit deeper bench than South Dakota. 14 of South Dakota State's 29 points have come off the bench, whereas USD has only had one uh, reserve come in, and that was Randy Rosenquist. Ryan Williams and Jeff Rao have to get involved here for South Dakota to get back in it. South Dakota State showing great balance. Chris White only seven in the first half, but they and, and Matthews only two, but they haven't had to rely on those guys because everybody's chipping in. Starting five out there for each side. The Cods with the basketball to start the second half, going to the basketball on the right side of your screen. Troy Toronto is with it. He's out there with John Brunigan, Doug Moeller, Jeff Rao, and Ryan Williams. And here's Williams with the basketball, very quiet in the first half. Moeller gives it up to Brennigan. Tony Matthews, Chris Counts, Pete Leiferman, Chris White. And Jeff Boer out there for South Dakota State. Taranez with the first shot of the second half, gets it back. Fresh 45, knocked away, controlled by Counts. Matthews pushes it up to White. Matthews will slow it down, run play number one. To Boer, left side. Counts against Moeller, double pumps. Rims out, Rao had a hand on it. Moeller knocked it out of bounds. South Dakota State maintains possession and a fresh 45. The defensive intensity hasn't diminished at all here in the early stages of the second half. Boo to Matthews, who again wants play number one. Counts to White. Looking inside at Leiferman, who now sets a screen for White. He tries a three-pointer behind it. Ooh. One for three. Nothing but net and ten for White. And now some backcourt pressure by the Jackrabbits, who are considered probably the top pressure team in the North Central Conference. They force an awful lot of turnovers with that full court pressure. Toronto is playing catch with Brennigan as State is now spreading their defense. Here's Brennigan with it. Brings the offense back around to the other side. Still with it. Brennigan in the paint. Shot blocked by Counts. Here come the Jackrabbits. Four on four, four on five. Matthews all the way. Matthews underneath. Shot blocked by Rao. Foul on Rao. Chris Counts will go to the line. Well, on the one end, they gave Brennigan a lot of room. He hit that shot in the first half, but not this time as it gets swatted away. Then on the other end, Rao up from behind on Chris Counts. And Counts will step to the line with a chance to pad this South Dakota State lead. He'll get two chances. Oh. Been a lot of almost in this game. Chris, uh, a la Jeff Rao with the Fu Manchu look. And I don't know if that's coming back in the style or not. Yeah, but who had it first? It has been at least at the arena this weekend. So now a uh, eight point advantage. For South Dakota State, their biggest of the, or the ties their biggest of the afternoon. They had led it 12-4 in the first half. Moeller on the inside, lay it up and in. And they let some more contact go. They're letting them play in the second half. Here's Counts. Back to Matthews. White. Has Boer cutting, also has Leiferman cutting, gives it to Boer in the corner. Now Matthews around the screen by Counts. Still with it, down the lane, lay it up and in. Matthews. 
Nice pick by Chris Counts that time to work Matthews free, and Matthews did the rest on his own. Pass on the inside. Will Rao get on the board? Nope. Dave Boots wants a foul. No whistles. State looking to make it a double-digit advantage. White for three. State will get it again with 45 seconds on the shot clock. Ball's going back to State. And we talked about the bench, and we should also mention, in case you weren't with us yesterday, Brad Fifield out for South Dakota with an ankle injury, unavailable for the weekend. Chris Counts gives the Jackrabbits their biggest lead of the game at 10. And Dave Boots wants a timeout. 16-22 to play second half. It's South Dakota State by 10 for the NCC4 Tournament Championship. You're watching it live from the Sioux Falls Arena. Take a look at your bookkeeping system. Does it look like mine used to? At Microcomputer Systems, we can't forget how difficult bookkeeping can be. We recommend and sell only the finest computer systems and software, custom designed to meet your business needs, including accounting, herd management, hedging, futures contracts, and profit and loss statements. If you want to solve your business problems, call Microcomputer Systems in Brookings, 1-800-658-3989. From performance to pure fun, Sioux River Cyclery in Brookings serves the needs of cyclists. Sioux River Cyclery has bikes, service, and all the accessories needed to ensure comfort and safety. No matter what your skill level, Sioux River Cyclery can help you decide what's right for you. Also, stop in and check out their line of shoes and clothing. Experience the fun and excitement of cycling at Sioux River Cyclery at 403 Main Street in Brookings. With 16.22 to play, the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State, the second seed in this tournament, have opened up a 10-point advantage on the number five seed defending tournament champ, the University of South Dakota. Moeller going in to switch with Tirana's on the inbound. Full court run and jump pressure by the Jackrabbits. Nice pass by Brennigan on the inside. Moeller will go to the line with two in his pocket. And those are two that South Dakota needed to get some inspiration here. Down by 10. Now cutting the lead to eight as Leiferman picks up his second foul. Got to attack the basket, and that's just what they did. Moeller for point number 10. Rebounded by Counts. State pushing it up in a hurry. Here's White around Tirana's. White to the hole strong, lays it up and in. Again, a 10 point advantage with four minutes gone, second half. Brennigan to Williams. He's been very quiet. So is Doug Jeff Rao. Brennigan for three. Oh, they call it a two. two? Okay. Back to eight at 39, 31, South Dakota State. We've played four and a half minutes in the second half. Matthews thought he saw an opening, but Williams closed it up. Now we got Boer on the back door. The pass was stolen back by Williams. To Brennigan. Tehran is wide on him. Moeller around, live for a minute, and he rims it home. That gets some of the USD faithful off their seats. And now South Dakota State fans want action, and they get it from Tony Matthews. Well, we saw one like that end to end at the end of the first half, and Coyotes defense letting it happen again. Williams looking around the inside. Moeller for three. Toronto's had a hand on it. Brunigan controlled it. Boer stole it. Boer blew the layup. He did everything right, but lay it in from two feet. Brennigan back the other way, throws up a miss. Here comes Boer again, gives it up to Matthews. End-to-end -end action, but no points. And Matthews said, I'm tired of this, let's slow it down. Lieferman White left alone. 
around Tiranes in the lane, 13 feet. Back to 10 now is the advantage for South Dakota State, 43-33. USD has led it, but once. 21-19 was the Coyotes' only advantage in the first half. It was a four-point game at the break. Tiranes on the inside, shot partially blocked by Leiferman in her counts. One of the two got a hand on it. And here's Matthews. State trying to run away with it as Rosenquist will check in when it's dead and almost takes the scorer's table with him. <laughs> Twenty-five on the clock for White. Counts. With Rao on him. Leiferman. Fifteen on the clock. Nice pass inside to Boer, who beat Williams, was fouled by Williams, and will go to the line. Well, we were kind of waiting for Boer to do something. His first basket of the game, he finally slips behind Ryan Williams, getting the crowd to life, and a chance for South Dakota State to put it even further away. They lead it by 12 now. Rosenquist comes in for Tiranes. Boer on the year, 78% free throw shooter. Went to Brookings High School. In Brookings, South Dakota. Home of the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Three point play. 13 point lead for State. Their biggest at 46-33. And a touch foul that time by Matthews as the calls are tightening up a little bit now as we're reaching the home stretch here. That is the third unofficially on Matthews, and it is official now. We're going to keep him in there. Rosenquist trouble getting it in. Just does beat the five-second call as he gets it into Moeller. And Rosenquist also playing with three. Here's Brennigan now. USD needs points. And it's off Williams. Oh. Credit Jeff Boer with a nice defensive play. Not only to knock it away in the first place, but then to knock it off Ryan Williams and have it go out of bounds. Boer and Williams have been on each other all day. State trying to run away and hide with it. Oh. Bauman on the inside from Matthews. 15 point lead now for the Jackrabbits. And where are Ryan Williams and Jeff Rao? When the Coyotes need them. Here's Williams. Brennigan back out to Moeller. 15 on the shot clock. Brennigan. 10 on the clock to Williams. Here's Rao. Will he get on the board? No. Ooh. He wasn't even over the rim with that. Ryan Williams and Jeff Rao, who between the two of them, average close to 30 points a game, have but three between them. Boer for two, no, rebounded by Leiferman. Last touched by Brennigan. Time out on the floor, 11.40 to play, second half. It's South Dakota State by 15. You're watching the NCC4 live from Sioux Falls Arena. Lake Area Door and Spa presents Great Lake Spas with 16 spas in stock, 11 different models in numerous colors and tub sizes. The two-person intimate paradise to 10-person entertaining size. Convenient portability allows inside or outside use or even both. Designed with beauty and durability, Great Lake Spas are easy to operate and are affordable to own. Free delivery and setup in the Watertown area. Lake Area Door and Spas and Great Lake Spas in Watertown. A tough team to beat. In Sioux Falls, one pharmacy fills more prescriptions than all the others combined. At Lewis, people know they can find the brand names they're looking for at a price they like. Lewis, Sioux Falls' first stop in pharmacy for nearly 50 years. In Sioux Falls, one pharmacy fills more prescriptions than all the others combined. Through the years, Lewis has earned a reputation of being both dependable and genuinely concerned. Lewis, Sioux Falls' first stop in pharmacy for nearly 50 years. 
Jeff Harkness with Pat Sweeney back at Sioux Falls Arena. And the South Dakota State fans living it up because they lead arch rival the University of South Dakota by 15. Stacy Koister checking into the game for the Coyotes. State with a basketball and a big lead. Anthony Tucker. Troy Bauman now on the outside, guarded by Rosenquist, gives it up to Boer. Here's Tucker with a 30 on the shot clock. Tucker on Williams. Williams goes down, no foul. Shot missed by Counts that time. Foul on the inside on Corey Van de Wettering. And that is number three on Corey. So you've got Matthews and Van de Wettering with three. Although Matthews is not in right now. And Rosenquist, three for South Dakota. And now you start to look at the three-point possibilities if you're the Coyotes, if you can't do anything here in the last next few minutes. Running in with it to Moeller, to Williams. Williams for three. Rebounded by Koistri, had a hand on it, tipped it to another 42, counts. Bauman right side, a Boer in the corner. Here's Tucker off a screen, got Williams off his feet. Can't hit. Van de Wettering had a chance at a tip, controlled by Koistra. <laughs> Moeller, Rosenquist with Bauman on him, gives it up to Brennigan. Here's Williams with Boer all over him. Inside now, Moeller, two bodies on him, shot blocked by Counts. And a blocking foul that time against South Dakota State. Is it Van de Wettering? It is. No, it's not. Oh, counts. It is Chris Counts. So that's three on Counts. Otherwise, it would have been Van de Wettering's fourth. Counts number 42. There's the foul. Van de Wettering was further back on the baseline. So now Counts will leave the game. Brennigan comes out for South Dakota. Tirana's back in for the Coyotes, who trail by 15 with 9.55 to go. And Rao on the bench. And another foul. State picking him up in bunches, and I think this time it'll be Van de Wettering. It is four on number 4-4. Four, four. Corey Van de Wettering, so Pete Leiferman returns. <laughs> South Dakota not having much of an inside game if it weren't for Doug Moeller. Coyotes maintain possession as Tarana's takes a dive. Still a 15-point lead for South Dakota State. Williams, fouled by Tucker on the pass, not on a shot. Tucker says, who, me? He was trying to talk referee Jay Salmon of St. Paul into a traveling call, and Salmon would have none of that. Dave Boots hoping his club can just get some points on the board here in a hurry. Moeller for three. Rebounded by Koistra. Knocked out of bounds by Bauman. Off of Koistra. So the state player is doing a nice uh, job of bouncing it off the USD guys before it goes out of bounds. Balance, bench, and defense. That's what has South Dakota State into a 15-point leader. Bauman guarded by Tiranes. Bauman sees an opening. Dish it off to Leiferman on the inside. Fouled by Koistra. Two, 
Jeez, Baumann has played really well for a youngster, freshman, not you know known for a lot of playmaking, but there he had the open man and Pete Leiferman. And when you just think about all the youngsters on these teams, as we mentioned, and the valuable tournament experience they're picking up. We look forward to some great years ahead in the North Central Conference. You mentioned Bauman, he only, aver only averaged 12 minutes a game. So for him to be in there making a contribution is truly a surprise. <laughs> Leiferman hits one of two. Koistra with it, they're begging him to shoot it. They being South Dakota State, and Ryan Williams will toss up a three, and it's rebounded by Bauman. Inside, nine minutes to play, and USD has done absolutely nothing to try to cut into a 15-point deficit. Leiferman makes it, no. Nope. Boy, an easy miss that time for Leiferman. Here's Williams. And it goes as a charge against Ryan Williams. Not only is Williams frustrated as we check the replay. They got him with the shoulder, but they give him the charge. And not only is Williams frustrated, but South Dakota has to be frustrated. The Coyotes have gone nearly Five minutes here without scoring. 8.22 to go. It was 29-25 at the intermission. And we've played almost 12 minutes. And the Coyotes have eight points in the second half. Not that State has been burning it up either. Only, no, they, one, they only have, one point in the last few minutes. They have 20 points. As they've gone on a big run here to start the second half. Timmerman, guarded by Tiranes. There's Tucker on the outside. Bowling his way in to Bauman. Ryan Notches, who just checked in there, flashed open for a moment underneath. Timmerman, eight on the shot clock. Tucker down the lane, shot blocked by Moeller. Timmerman got it back. South Dakota State controls it. Notches stepped on the line. Time out of the floor. 7.38 to play. Second half. Still, South Dakota State leading it now by 16 at 49-33. Over at the University of South Dakota, you're watching the NCC4 live from Sioux Falls Arena. Haven't you waited long enough? Microcomputer Systems is ready to help you get out from under your work and get on top of your business. You're ready right now. Don't wait any longer. Call today and find out how you can keep profit records, budgets, and itemized costs at your fingertips. We're ready when you are, wherever you are. Microcomputer Systems has the personal service and technical support to keep you where you want to be. When it comes to buying a color TV, many people think state-of-the-art begins overseas. When the truth is, state-of-the-art starts here. You just have to know what to ask for. Ask for the only TVs with four ways to enjoy stereo sound, like Bose and Dolby Surround. Ask to see a Zenith. For true innovation in television, quality never looked more like a Zenith. Find out about your free remote at Graham Tire Company, Sioux Falls, Ruse TV and Appliance Mitchell, or Lakebrook Music in Madison. Time running out on the University of South Dakota Coyotes in their hopes of repeating as tournament champions in the NCC4. Just 7.30 to play, and they trail it by 16. They may have to crank up that three-point attack to have a prayer here. Moeller for three. Well, he heard you. Just couldn't get it to fall. Notches back the other way, left alone. Bauman had a hand on it. Brennan had a hand on it. Bauman touched it last. Jim Thorson taking a walk down the uh, 
bench there to have a word with the officials. Matthews checks back in. White checks back in. Bauman and Tucker, who did a very, very admirable job as a substitute backcourt, sit down. Boy, haven't they? You can't say enough about the South Dakota State bench today. And Brad Timmerman, scoreless in the second half, but he had six points in the first half. He's only averaging five. Steal by Leiferman on the lob inside. Williams tried to hit Tirana's. Nothing going right for the Coyotes here. Here's White. Just checked back in along with his backcourt mate, Matthews. Notches in out of the corner. Here's Matthews. Leiferman shot, or the pass was too strong. It was saved by White. Notches for three. Rosenquist tipped it. Williams controlled it. Brennigan's got it. Tirana's for three. South Dakota with 6.20 to go. Breaks a scoreless streak of about seven minutes. One thing I just remember that Dave Boots told me earlier in the year when I asked him if they pressed, he said, we do not press. So don't look for any pressure here from USD as Leiferman goes up strong, gets the bucket and the foul from Moeller. Life remain. Life remain bringing the Jackrabbits to life here. You said it, going up strong with another heavyweight, Doug Moeller. And South Dakota, a little of that frustration coming out there with Leiferman going to the line and a 15-point lead now. Time running out on South Dakota. Rebounded by Timmerman. So it's been a, a team of stars for the South Dakota State Jackrabbits so far this afternoon. Notches on the inside, dish it off to Timmerman. Stripped away, here come the Coyotes. Trying to unleash their big offensive machine. John Brennigan nails it. Jeff Rao will be back in when it's dead. 13 point advantage for the Jackrabbits. Timmerman to Matthews, 30 on the shot clock. Timmerman again, guarded by Rosenquist. Here's Notches. 15 on the shot clock. Good defense by the Coyotes. Brennigan, Matthews the other way, all the way. Can't get it to fall, rebounded by Moeller. Brennigan all the way, blocking foul that time. And it'll go against Ryan Notches. Brennigan penetrating again. We've seen him before. He's a gutsy guy inside and drawing a pair of defenders and drawing the foul. He and beat Notches to the spot that time. And at this point, South Dakota needs any break it can get with 4.50 to go, trailing 51-38. Brennigan, one of the best free throw shooters on the team at 86%. Two of three today at the line. But again, the second half full of might have beens here for the Coyotes. Brennigan gets one of two to cut it to a 12 point state advantage at 51 39. Jeff Boer will be in when it's dead for South Dakota State. White in the corner to Notches. Timmerman and Rosenquist are struggling on the inside. 20 on the shot clock for Matthews. Pull it back out. Leiferman, white for three. Doesn't draw iron. That gives the South Dakota fans a rare chance to cheer here, yelling air ball. As White got absolutely nothing on it, but South Dakota now down 51-39, 4-10 to go. 
Fans come to their feet trying to get the Coyotes charged. Rosenquist, nice lob on the inside. Tyrannes for a two. Back to a 10-point game, 51-41, final 345. The Coyote fans want defense. A foul on the drive. And he'll go against Brennigan. I think it's, yeah, it is against Brennigan. That's his first foul. There he is slapping at it. As Matthews was penetrating. And we've got time out on the floor with 3.38 to play in regulation. State still up by 10, but the Coyotes trying to catch him. You're watching the NCC4 live from Sioux Falls Arena. The Roland Pin Restaurant has fantastic family dining for you and the entire family. Start the day off right with two eggs and toast or a fresh baked muffin for just 99 cents or build your own sandwich. It's our spring special, salad or deli bar, $3.99. And don't forget, our nightly all-you-can-eat buffet specials. You make the choice. Bring in your family and friends to the Roland Pin Restaurant in Sioux Falls, located on West Russell, just west of the arena. Remember the Roland Pin Restaurant. Why should you watch Eyewitness Weather? You already know Phil Schreck, the only television meteorologist you count on for more accurate weather each weeknight on Eyewitness News. You also know Dave Preheim. Dave's up before everyone to give you the first look at the weather weekday mornings on Breakfast Club. And now, meet Kathy Ellis. She'll give you a clear picture of the weekend weather and let you know what to expect in the week ahead. Eyewitness Team Weather. More reason to watch Eyewitness News. That's what's at stake. That trophy and an automatic qualifying spot into the regional play in NCAA Division II, which will begin next week. The coveted hardware. Does the bow tie come with it? <laughs> Brannigan fouls Tucker. Seventh team foul on the Coyotes. And it's free throw time for Anthony Tucker. Tucker hitting at a 64% clip at the line for the season. So not the best man to foul, but we'll see what happens here with a 10-point Jackrabbit lead and 3.35 on the clock. Tucker has yet to be at the line today. James Anthony Tucker wants our jobs, Pat. Oh, yeah? He is a mass comm major. And he's a senior, so uh, if you need help next year, maybe he's somebody to talk to. Coyote fans on their feet. They want offense, but they get a block from Leiferman as Rosenquist took it to the hole and came away empty. I don't know what Brennigan's doing, but he just got his second reach in about 30 seconds. And his third foul of the game. And another chance for South Dakota State at the line, although the Rabbits are three of seven at the free throw line in the second half, but with the lead in double figures, it hasn't really hurt them. Tucker missed his last shot moments ago. He'll get another chance. Misses again. Well, the strategy works. Brennigan apparently knows something that I don't. But USD has got to convert somehow, and they uh, almost have it knocked away. But Matthews is called for the foul. Or Tucker makes that. It's called for the foul. It's Tucker. So the tables turn here. Tucker being harassed on one end. Harrison <laughs> Moeller on the other. The, the, the USD folks trying to say he was he was shooting. If we have that replay again, if we can roll it back. Can we take a look at that again? I don't know. You tell me. Is he shooting here? 
No, I don't no think way. so. And it'll be a three-shot foul wow. since it was outside the three-point stripe. So, And Jim Thorson has a right to beef on that one. There was no way in the world Doug Moeller was shooting. But they'll give him three here. It's the new rule. He was outside the three-point line, and South Dakota missing a big chance there as Moeller goes empty on the first free throw. Well, credit the USD folks for power of persuasion. <laughs> But they talk their way into three free throws from Moeller. And he hits on two of them. And Rao will check in with counts when it's dead. Back to an eight-point game. South Dakota State leading at 51-43. Inside, three minutes to play. White operating on Tiranes. 20 on the shot clock. White gets it back underneath. Shot blocked by Moeller. Foul on Moeller. Oh. And Moeller can't believe that one, and that's worth another look. Third foul on Moeller as Rao will come back in. He thought it was a clean block. The referee does not agree. Regardless. White will step to the line where he is two of two today. Well, you sound like a broken record, but free throws are so important down the stretch. And South Dakota State just chinking them right now. They have missed six in the second half, but not that one. White breaks the drought, and it's a nine-point game with 2.25 to play. And there's the offense for, South, for the University of South Dakota now. they got to fire up the threes, held ball, and who gets it? State. You see Dave Boots trying to direct traffic. Not a lot of maneuvering room for the coaches there in front of the benches. Now they're pressing. And it pays off. Well, I guess when you're facing what could be your last game of the year, you pull out all stops. USD, by uh, Dave Boots' own admission, not a pressing team. They don't like to press. They don't like what happens to them when they have to press. They don't like the situation that they're put in. They had Rosenquist and Counts with a little battle there, and they finally break that up. He was on the line. Brennigan was on the line. South Dakota hurting itself. So here again, USD with pressure and a foul that time by Moeller. With 2.09 to play. That's four on Moeller, who's been one of the few consistent men for the Coyotes today. He with 13 and Brennigan 14. Whereas Jim Thorson's Jackrabbits have done a good job spreading it out, especially in the first half, not so much here in the second. And the drought continues for South Dakota State. A lot of goose eggs fired up from the line in the second half. One of two for Matthews. State back up by 11. Nothing fancy for the Coyotes now. Get it and shoot. Brennigan for three. Leiferman got it. Tirana's fouled him. That's about all South Dakota can do now as Tyrannus picks up his first foul. And Leiferman going to the free throw line. A 73% shooter. And again, for I think the second time in the tournament, the score apparently isn't right. So uh, at least according to the USD folks, we're going to check it. It says 
It could be that it's only 53-43. We will find I believe out. that's what they want, It yes. is 53-43. I hesitated for a moment there when I said 54-43, but you can't argue with the numbers on the scoreboard, or can you? Dave Woods well, just did, and he won. You were telling me about the uh, problems last night with the clock. They don't need any more problems with that scoreboard. <laughs> clock malfunction at the high school tournament. <laughs> and Jim Thorson giving life from him some quick lessons on how to shoot free throws. Get down, bend, <laughs> follow through. See, you never stop coaching, even little, free throws. Little mini <laughs> clinic over there on the sideline. It pays off for life from Tennessee. It's a now it's 54-43. Inside two minutes. Desperation time for the defending tournament champs. And that was a desperate shot by Williams, who would hope to get a foul. But instead, Rosenquist commits a foul. Rosenquist picking up foul number four. So he and Moeller and Williams with four fouls apiece. The parade to the free throw line continues with Chris Counts. It's been, very, it's been a very ugly parade so far, kind of resembling the Duda parade in Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> and you would know about that being from in that uh, region, but uh, even though they've been missing some free throws here, it really hasn't hurt them. They've always had that double-digit lead. And I think that one of the biggest cheers of the afternoon was when Counts hit the first of two, kind of the Bronx cheer that time, <laughs> as they finally hit one. And Moeller lays it up and in. Timeout, Coyotes. With a minute 37 to play, but a lot of work yet to be done for South Dakota as they still trail it by 10. And we will keep it right here. 10 down. 97 ticks to go. Three-pointers have to enter into the picture here now with the possibilities. Williams, Muller, Tiranas, and Rosenquist, each capable. But South Dakota today has only hit three, or excuse me, four three-pointers, three of them coming in the first half. Williams, his only points of the game came on a three-pointer in the first half. He and Rao basically have been shut down today by the South Dakota State defense. A marvelous defensive job. Great balance in scoring, great bench strength, particularly in the first half, and that momentum carried over to the second for the Jackrabbits, and they are making it very difficult for South Dakota. But a three-pointer could change the complexion of the game. Stay with us after the game. We'll have a word with the winning coach and one of the uh, star players, and we'll have the all-tournament team for you, and it could be that you might see three or four of these guys on that all-tournament team. A miss. State gets it back. Wild scramble, foul on Tirana's with a minute 29 left. A lot of bumping and pushing along the way and finally the whistle. I was anticipating it might go before that, but another chance for White at the free throw line. He's got 15 points unofficially today. Three of four at the free throw line. And a chance to go up by a dozen. White, 29 to go. White, a strong candidate for tournament MVP honors. As he's led South Dakota State now to a big win yesterday over Nebraska Omaha in overtime. And he's leading him here today as they lead the University of South Dakota by 11 with a minute 15 to play. That's a long shot that doesn't hit anything for Rosenquist except the hands of Doug Muller. That was an NBA three pointer or a CBA three-pointer if you're a fan of the Sioux Falls Sky Force. And sometimes I wonder, you know, if the guys get a little confused out there in the heat of the battle, if they realize that that is the uh, line, if they're thinking of the NCAA line or the CBA line, it's something to think about. Maybe a little extra split second well, to think, think was, about that. I think it was Thor Palamore yesterday for Nebraska Omaha, who in desperation fired up a three, and he didn't care. He looked for the first line he could <laughs> see. And, Tossed one in as Boer misses a free throw. Well, he thought he joined the party. Everybody else has. One of two. Final minute 10. Brannigan all the way. Nothing falling for the Coyotes. Foul on Williams. Fouled White. And I think Williams has just fouled out. No. 
It's on uh, Moeller, and he's fouled out. Moeller fouls out with 15 points. High for the Coyotes this afternoon. Well, has Doug Moeller played his final college basketball game? We'll have to wait and see. It could be. 6'6 senior from West Point, Iowa. Chris White, on the other hand, high for the Jackrabbits with 16. Other seniors, in case you're wondering, Jeff Rao for the Coyotes is a senior from Harlan, Iowa. Brad Fifield, who uh, isn't playing because he sprained an ankle, an ankle on uh, Thursday, is a senior out of St. Paul. Those three are the only seniors as Tyrone Morris gets set to check in. Those three are the only seniors for South Dakota for the state Jackrabbits. Tony Matthews will graduate. Anthony Tucker will not be back. Those two are the only final year players for the Jackrabbits. And again, a miss. And it's contagious for South Dakota State. Everyone is joining in on the, on the action here. Well, they're about good for half of them here yep. in the second half. One of two has been the rule of the day, at least in the second half. 13-point lead for State. Final minute. Tirana's with a tip. No good. Stay with it. And Chris Council go to the line, fouled by Brennigan. Stay with us. We'll have the championship trophy presentation. Some very happy celebration going on for one of these clubs. At this point, it looks like South Dakota State. Have the all-tournament team for you and much more. And a look at Jim Thorson there. He's very much in the running for Coach of the Year honors in the North Central Conference along with Rich Glass at the University of North Dakota. Counts finally gets a free throw and gets a cheer as Shannon Dana, a freshman guard, comes in to see his first action. And Jim Thorson will clear his bench. Jeff Boer sits down, the junior from Brookings. Ooh. Counts. Counts for counts. Final 45, Rosenquist for three. Rebounded by Morris, who just checked in there. Morris gets on the scoreboard. Shannon Dana will get his first uh, action right away as he'll go to the free throw line, just coming off the bench. Shannon is freshman, a graduate of Rapid City Central High School in extreme western South Dakota, a native of Spearfish. White sits down. Matthews sits down. 17 for White, 7 for Matthews. You've got to think those guys are possible all-tournament selections as well. <laughs> and there's a guy who's ice cold just coming off the bench, and he makes one. He just needed a freshman in there to charge it up. Why not? One of two. <laughs> 35 seconds left. Morris will fire up a three. Counts kept it alive. Leiferman controlled it. Bauman in there. Not just for a long three. Doesn't draw iron. I think Jim Thorson's going to get notches out of there. <laughs> so White. Thought he had the rest of the day off, has to hurriedly return. Not just uh, not number one on Jim Thorson's list right now, depending on which list you check. There's a three by Williams. Counts was pushed that time by Rosenquist. Out of bounds, and the ball goes back to the USD. With five seconds left, the conference tournament title will stay in South Dakota, but it'll be making a trip north to Brookings. As in 1991, number two was number one in the postseason. South Dakota State wins the conference tournament 61-47 over the University of South Dakota. And we have the 
NCAA tournament team for you now. Chris White of South Dakota State, the tournament most valuable player. Dave Vonish of North Dakota, another member of the all-tournament first team. And then the other three players all played in this game. Jeff Rao and Troy Taranez from the University of South Dakota. Tony Matthews from South Dakota State. up at Sioux Falls Arena. The folks from Brookings like what they see as South Dakota State wins it Chamber Sports and Rec Committee. I would like to thank you all for coming to this NCC4 event and congratulate the Coyotes and the Jacks for making it to the championship team game. At this time, I'd like to announce the uh, all NCC4 tournament team uh, from UND, Dave Vani. From, from USD, Jeff Rao. From USD, Troy Taranas. From the championship jacks, Tony Matthews. And the tournament MVP, Chris White. At this time, this time, with the captains of the championship team, South Dakota State University Jacks, please come forward to get the championship trophy, which includes an automatic trip to the NCAA playoffs. So South Dakota State will take the hardware to Brookings as they dethrone the defending tournament champs. Final score, 61-47. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching NCC Championships live from Sioux Falls Arena. The Roland Pin Restaurant has fantastic family dining for you and the entire family. Start the day off right with two eggs and toast or a fresh baked muffin for just 99 cents or build your own sandwich. It's our spring special, salad or deli bar, $3.99. And don't forget our nightly all-you-can-eat buffet specials. You make the choice. Bring in your family and friends to the Roland Pin Restaurant in Sioux Falls, located on West Russell, just west of the arena. Remember the Roland Pin Restaurant. Yonder comes some outdoorsmen. So, how far to the river? On them tires? Don't worry. <laughs> we won't! <laughs> Sooner or later, you will own General. For passenger car or light truck tires, see OK Tire in Sioux Falls. OK Tire has a complete selection of General Tires to fit your needs. OK Tire, your neighborhood professionals at the corner of Rice Street and Cliff Avenue, Sioux Falls. One party asked me, they says, uh, when you're combining corn, they tell me that a combine sings through this corn. Well, I've never heard my combine sing yet. It has moaned and groaned a few times, but then when it moans and groans, that's when you have the good yields. And it, 
It just looked good in the combine tank when you look back through the window. I don't think the good old days are gone. I think there's still some good old days left. Just, just look where we've come from in a short span, from, from farming with mules to, to four-wheel drive tractors, from farming 25 acres to farming 2,500 acres. In just a short time, you're just talking like in a space of 50 years or so. So you look 50 years on down the road, what, who used to say what technology is going to do for us? South, South Dakota State wins the NCC Tournament Championship. Pat Swinney standing by with Tournament MVP Ryan White. Okay. Chris White, I know when you started this tournament, you thought the Jackrabbits could take it all, but did you think you would walk away with MVP honor? No, I didn't think that, you know, because first of all, I thought it was going to be a team effort. I didn't think I was going to walk away with MVP, but I thought, you know, that we can win it. All we, do, all we have to do is play defense, and that's what we did. The Jackrabbits definitely played defense today. You held uh, Rao scoreless. Williams got only three points. Did you think you'd be that successful defensively? We didn't think that, but, you know, we had a lot of confidence in playing defense, so we just went out there and concentrated on them, too, because that's where all their scoring was coming from, from Rao and uh, Williams. And, you know, we had a lot of confidence in our defense, and it carried over, you know, to stop them. Now, you led the team in scoring, but your team had great balance today, too. It was everybody pitching in, wasn't it? Everyone pitching in. That's what we need to go into the regionals. You know, it can't be a one-man show. Coach, you know, tell us that all the time. When we get balance, we win like we did today, you know, easily almost. So, you know, balance is the key. Chris, congratulations. Let's talk to your coach here. Thanks a lot. All right. Jim Thorson. Yeah. Balance, bench, and defense, those were the three things that did it for you. Yeah, well, you got to play that defense, you know, to, uh, to be in a championship play, I think. Uh, we've all, that's always been true, and, and we've had good team balance and uh, uh, great depth, I think, that our young kids have really come on and, and done the job for us. What was the plan on Rao and Williams? Rao was held scoreless, and Williams just three points. Well, I think that's just a, a quirk of fate, you know, really, uh, to be able to hold two fine players like that, uh, uh, that they didn't get in the scoring column. It certainly worked out for us. and. Uh, uh, you know, our defense was pretty good on them and so on, but just to, to be able to hold them uh, for 40 minutes, is uh, 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 they must have been tired or something. Chris White, an MVP performance. Your thoughts on that? Well, he's certainly been a great addition to our program, and uh, he's been a, the athletic type that we haven't had since I've been there, that, uh, uh, you know, the strength and, and the size, uh, quickness. Uh, he can shoot from outside. He'll take it in and dunk on you, those kind of things. And uh, it's just kind of a, a fitting thing. Uh, if we run in our offense through and all of a sudden he gets the ball, he can finish it off for us. Quite a turnaround from last year. Here you are going 3-15 and 15 and then second seed in the conference this year, winning the playoff title. Do you think you have a little momentum here? Well, I, you know, we're playing good and we're playing confident, and uh, that's what you need to do when you go into the rest of the tournament here. Now the regional's coming up, and I know where you would like to see that regional. Yeah, well, we're going to get in there and battle now. We'll throw some money around or something and uh, uh, see if we can host that tournament. Uh, I know it'll be between UND and us, but uh, either way, we're, uh, you know, all things considered, uh, it's, uh, it's way beyond our wildest dreams, and, uh, uh, you know, just, uh, just real pleased, and we'll take anything we can get right now. No matter where it is, you're going to show That's up. That's right. I, I think we will, yes. <laughs> Jim, congratulations. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Pat. Boy, it goes from the basement to the penthouse for South Dakota State. Just one year ago, they finished the year 3-15 and 15 in the North Central Conference, 8-19 and 19 overall. They were in dire straits. Jim Thorson took some uh, dynamic moves, didn't bring back some of his players from last season, didn't renew some scholarships. Uh, the name Rich McLennan sticks out. In my mind, uh, one of the leading scorers for the club last year, they did not bring him back. And uh, at the time, there was some criticism, but uh, it, it paid off as they brought in some new faces, and South Dakota State goes home with the NCC Tournament Hardware in 1991 after winning just three games in the conference last season and eight games overall. And they're a happy group of uh, Jackrabbits, and now it'll be interesting to see how that region uh, tournament location turns out because we know Brookings was going to be putting in a bid for it, and uh, Grand Forks obviously has something to say about that as well. We will probably know that tomorrow. Everyone will be on pins and needles tomorrow in Grand Forks and Brookings awaiting that announcement. I think it comes out about 1.30 or 2 o'clock. And I know 
The Jackrabbits, well, nobody in the league wants to come to Grand Forks. The Sioux have yet to lose on their home floor. They've got a, like a 32-game win streak there. So uh, if the Sioux do indeed get it, that'll be a big plus for them. The Jackrabbits would like to think they have an equally as impressive uh, facilities at the Frost Arena in Brookings and that they are capable of winning games there as well. It will be interesting to see, but we do know definitely that uh, these two clubs are in. The chances of a third NCC school making it are unlikely simply because these were definitely head and shoulders record-wise the two top teams in the conference. The other schools that uh, had good marks at the end of the year, Mankato State being one of them, didn't even make it to the Final Four. And so I think you, are, you have seen the two conference representatives in the region play.